But why, why wouldn't we actually get better at living on this planet that we now live on? Because the two things. One is the brutal reality of uh, natural selection is that um, if something is not advantageous, you would not be having children or you'd be having less children. That's just not our world today. If we're going to talk about evolution, we better make sure we understand what it actually means. Dennis, read. Evolution, the process by which species adapt over generations to survive and thrive. It's not just about nature choosing the fittest. It's about humanity rewriting its own story. And that's where it gets uncomfortable for me because a lot of us in the field would argue that the world around us today is not the world we've evolved for. It's just not. And, and we will probably never be evolved for the world that we're in ever again. Because we evolved for <laughs> caves being prime real estate, for a tribe of about 100, I don't know, 150 people where, I don't know, two thirds of them would have basically been your, your dad's relatives, um, where you knew everybody by name. We did not evolve for farming cities um, and certainly the last 400 years where there's just been this absolute technological overhaul. Um, and that comes with problems. It just does. True, some of those problems are a broken dating market and broken families. But here's the twist. Because of evolution, that brokenness will lead to the artificial womb. Let's dive in. Ain't that amazing? Yeah! Right, so a lot of people have just assumed it's our brain size. But Neanderthals had similar sized brains to us. And also, if it's just about brain size, I keep saying this, if it was just about brain size, elephants and whales would be on this podcast right now and not us. Like, it's not just brain size. So one of the things we argue, actually, is that friendliness, cooperation, is what gave us an edge as a species. And that shocks people because they look at us and they go, the friendly species, really? And I'm like, yes. Oh, wow. Guess who's struggling to be friendly with you? Guess who doesn't want to cooperate with you in these modern times? Pay attention to what this expert is about to say. Actually, cooperate. there is so much evidence to show that we are a hyper, highly cooperative species in a way that no other species has ever been. Um, and that that gave us this edge. And there are theories that state things like language and our brain kind of being superior, and I'm saying this in inverted commas, isn't actually because that was being, that's what was being selected for, that was what, you know, um, we were driving um, towards. It's that actually we were a highly cooperative species and so we ended up with better brains and we ended up with language just to help us be the social cooperative. So actually us being smarter is kind of a side effect of us just being really social, which is kind of wonderful. And I'm like, why are we not talking about this, especially in the political climate we're in right now? Yeah, it feels relevant. It feels relevant that actually that hyper -co cooperation is the cornerstone to our success, in my opinion. Exactly. Humanity's superpower wasn't claws, speed or fangs. It was teamwork. We built shelters, raised families, hunted mammoths together. But now in dating, in marriage, in family life, cooperation is collapsing. Why? Because survival no longer depends on each other. Governments and big corporations stepped in as the safety net, breaking the family bond and rewarding radical individualism. Ethnism became the perfect delivery system. Trade husbands for the state, trade family for career, trade teamwork for total independence. I have a lot of hope in our species, but the second reason is my own story. Uh, I think for somebody to be able to make such a traumatizing shift and find the funny in it, you know, uh, learning, let me tell you, learning how to exist in a secular world, having grown up, I often say, you know, arranged marriage, by the way, by my imam, my imam arranged my marriage to Tinder was quite the journey, let me tell you. And the fact that, fine, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm absolutely fine and can come out the other end presenting a BBC landmark on human evolution. For me, I'm like, we have the capacity within us to be resilient, to come up with ideas, to step outside of our tribe, to change, et cetera, et cetera. Ella Al-Shamahi proves it. She left her tribe, her culture, her religion. And guess what? She didn't starve. She didn't die. She thrived. A hundred years ago, that was impossible. Women needed the tribe. Husbands needed the tribe. Families needed each other. Now you can walk away from everyone and still get Wi-Fi, 
food delivery and a paycheck. We've made survival so easy. We don't have to cooperate. Not in life and not in love. I think that is the nature though, Christian, of, <laughs> of tribalism. You agree with your tribe and you pretty much accept by and large the opinions of your tribe. And there is in, there are so many incidents which were very telling to me because I obviously turned up to university and there were one or two people there who were also from my community. They weren't missionaries, but they were from my community. Um, and I remember looking at one of them who was had to take an evolution class. So I turned up to university taking every single evolution class I could. That was I was on a mission. Yeah. yeah, I was there. Whereas others were at University College London, they're not going to let you. It's it, historically UCL was, you know, the godless place on Gower Street. It, they have a huge genetic evolutionary kind of tradition. Um, the Darwin Building is literally where Darwin lived, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and they they're not going to teach you a lot of their biological subjects without forcing you to take a number of um, evolution classes. And I looked at one of them and I said, OK, so I thought I found my sister in like, you know, brainstorming. Um, and I was like, great. So I'm thinking there's a weakness here and there's a potential weakness here. Um, what, what are you thinking? And she she was panicked and she was like, I don't want to think about this. I have to take this class to pass and to get this, you know, to get through the year. I do not want to think about this. And I was like, for me, looking back now, I see what that was. Um, that was you fall in line with your tribe um, and you don't want to question something because at the time that was actually questioning your faith. It wasn't questioning. It's not like there was the alternative that there is today. She's right. We're wired to follow our tribe. But what do modern Western tribes raise? Not wives, not husbands, not builders of families. They raise employees. They raise people who think loyalty is oppression and commitment is settling. With many benefits, you know, I, like truthfully, if you held a gun to my head and were like, okay, well, you go back to the Paleolithic, I'd be like, no, 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 please, I'm actually quite happy where I am. But there's so much that isn't working. And in my opinion, it isn't working because this isn't the world we've evolved for. You see, she proves why you shouldn't bring your foreign girlfriend back to the West. Once they taste even a little bit of Western society, they'll absorb the same mentality and behaviors you were trying to avoid. If you want a woman who values marriage and family, she has to come from a tribe that still teaches it. Good luck finding that in the West. Right, but do you believe as an evolutionary biologist now that, that evolution will have the answers no, to this? No, no. And, and that this is something that's constantly moving and changing and... No, I, I think I agree with um, other evolutionary biologists that basically think evolution is now dwindling to the point of almost not existing in our species because we have medicine and science that have just taken away the things that would normally have cast out people that, you know, for example, I mean, the most extreme example, and this is uncomfortable, so I'm really sorry about this, but like infertility. Infertility, that is the biggest thing that would normally be selected against, like just by very nature of it. Um, now, well, infertility is something to be solved with science, which yes. is a wonderful thing. Like, so it's natural wonderful. selection is it's, no longer it's, operative. If it's, it, it does still exist, it's very weak. It's very, very weak. Certainly in the West, it's incredibly incredible. You know, it's, I mean, because that is quite, it's a massive claim, that, isn't it? You're saying human behavior yeah. has halted evolution. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's controversial. That's, you know, that's, we've been saying this for, for a while now. <laughs> That's a bold claim. She's talking about our ability to reproduce naturally. Yes, birth rates are falling worldwide. Women delay family, reject average men, and push motherhood to the last minute. But does that mean evolution has stopped? No, evolution hasn't stopped. It's just moved from nature to technology. If humans can't or won't reproduce the old way, we'll build a new way. Artificial wombs, genetic engineering, reproductive tech. This is evolution just no longer bound to biology. But why, why wouldn't we actually get better at living on this planet that we now live on? Because the two things. One is the brutal reality of uh, natural selection is that um, if something is not advantageous, you would not be having children or you'd be having less children. That's just not our world today. Our world today, you can, you can be um, brilliant by every standard and choose not to have children and that be, you know, absolutely normal. Um, 
you can have some kind of a like a, any kind of disease that normally would have you know, we laugh in our family that quite a few of us have got allergies and one of us has an allergy to dust and we just laugh at that particular sibling because we're like can you imagine how you would have handled the caves <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. You, you. It's a good job that the Shavahis were like, you know, uh, hanging around right now and not back then, basically. Um, and the, the flip side is that technology is evolving way too fast. And when cooperation between men and women collapses, we'll evolve and build the perfect companion. Humans are endlessly adaptable. Every crisis in history has forced us to change, and dating is no different. If women don't want to cooperate with men, men will innovate. They'll find a way to get what they want without biological women. Society will adjust because survival always wins. It's brutal. It's inevitable. It's evolution. So when Ella Alshamani says humans survive by cooperating, she's right. But when cooperation dies, survival doesn't. It just changes. And that's where the future of love, marriage, and family is headed. Adapt or get left behind. Man, it's where we work it. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.